All right, hey AP Chemistry, shooting to you live from Brooklyn, New York. Um, so we got a question from Lauren about question number 68 in your exercises from chapter six, thermochemistry. Um, and so this was a very interesting question and it's definitely a difficult question because there's some information that seems to be missing that you have to piece together. So let's try and answer this together. So it says a 2.85 gram lead weight initially at 10.3 degrees Celsius is submerged into 7.55 grams of water at 52.3 degrees Celsius in an insulated container. What is the final temperature of both substances at thermal equilibrium? So whenever we have two objects that are coming into contact with each other at different temperatures and we're asking for a change in temperature, we have to think of heat capacity or specific heat capacity. So I'm on page 259 of your chapter six textbook. And there was this equation known as Q equals MC delta T. And so Q is the heat involved in any change in temperature. M is the mass of the object in whose temperature is changing. C is the specific heat capacity of the object in which its temperature is changing. And delta T is how the temperature changed. And delta T is T final minus T initial. And specific heat capacity are some known values for certain objects like lead or water. So in looking at this question, I have 2.85 grams of lead, and I have 7.55 grams of water. The lead is at 10.3 degrees Celsius, and the water is at 52.3 degrees Celsius. So I kind of want to draw like a system and surroundings um, type of situation. So let's, I want to draw a picture first. All right, so something that we need to note is that the way energy flows, it always goes from hot to cold. So if I have a hot object, right, so if I have a hot object, the energy transfers from that hot object to the cold object to reach some middle temperature or thermal equilibrium, as we'll call it. So in both these cases, I have lead, which is 10.3 degrees Celsius, and water, which is 52.3 degrees Celsius. Between these two, I know my water is going to be my warmer portion of this. So my water is going to be giving energy to the lead. So let me just draw kind of like my lead as my system. So here's my system, and I'm considering it lead. And my surroundings is going to be the water. This is my surroundings. All right, and so the way energy is going to flow is it's going to flow from the water to the lead, right? So maybe you can't see that arrow, but energy is flowing from the water to the lead. And so just a little bit even more, if I have H2O, Q, lead, Q, right? So water is losing energy and lead is gaining energy. All right, so that's what's happening. And so here's my system surroundings type of business here where basically if I'm trying to simplify this and this is an insulated container. So since it's insulated, that means that there's no air or hand touching or glassware that's messing up the energy exchange between these two objects. So all of the energy is coming from the water and going to the lead. So I'm not gaining or losing any energy from anywhere else. What can I say about the quantity that the water is losing with respect to what the lead is gaining. Is it gonna be greater than, less than, or equal to? Well, due to conservation of energy, this energy needs to be equal. Q loss is equal to Q gain. Okay, and conventionally we denote Q loss as negative. So negative Q loss is equal to Q gain. That's because this number due to conservation of energy and matter, cannot be different on both sides. So if this water lost 20 kilojoules, it must have gone to the lead, which gained then 20 kilojoules. So we're going to keep this in mind. We know this equation is Q equals MC delta T. Let's write down some MCs and delta Ts that we could know. We know the mass, the mass of lead. It was given to us as 2.85 grams. Do we know the specific heat capacity of lead? 
Well, not off the top of our heads, but since this is a textbook question, we have this beautiful table, table 6.4, and it gives us a specific heat capacity of lead is 0.128 joules per gram degrees Celsius. And then delta T, mm, I don't know yet, but I do know that my T initial is 10.3 degrees Celsius. Okay, and then just a side note, delta T is equal to T final minus T initial. That little F means final, that little I means initial. So my final temperature minus my initial temperature is my delta T. So we're gonna put that in our back pocket for later. So now let's look at water. My mass of water was given to me as 7.55 grams. My specific heat capacity of water, if you don't know it off the top of, my, of your head, it's in this table as well. The specific heat capacity of water is used as 4.18. So 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. And what specific heat capacity says is, this is the amount of energy it takes to raise one gram of an object by one degree Celsius. So it takes 4.18 joules to raise one gram of water by one degree Celsius. Sometimes you'll see this number as 4.2, like on the AP exam. Sometimes they simplify it as 4.2. Sometimes in other older tests, they, say they have more significant figures like 4.184. Use whatever value they give you. Otherwise, you'll be within significant figures no matter which value they give you. My delta T of the water, I don't know yet. But I do know my initial temperature is 52.3 degrees Celsius. Okay? Now, for in order to have thermal equilibrium, both the final temperatures must, must be equal. They are both going to reach the same final temperature. How do I know that's going to be thermal equilibrium? Well, again, for energy flow, it needs to go from a hot object to a cold object. If both these objects are at the same temperature, there's not going to be a significant heat flow. So when T of object 1 is equal to T of object 2, there's no significant heat flow. And we call this thermal equilibrium. So we know for a fact that one value that these systems have in common is their final temperature. Now, I also do know this fancy equation that Q loss is equal to, negative Q loss is equal to Q gain. Where is this going to come into play? Some of you might start trying to plug into an equation. You might do Q of lead is equal to M lead C lead delta T. Q H2O is equal to M H2O C H2O delta T. And you're going to come into an issue because you don't know Q and you don't know delta T. So how would you solve this problem if we don't know Q and we don't know delta T? Well, we don't know Q, but we do know that the Q of the lead is equal to negative Q of the H2O. Why? We already established that the water is hotter or warmer than the lead, so energy is flowing from the water to the lead. That means whatever quantity of energy, 10, 20, 1 million joules of energy that this water lost, it went all to the lead. Okay, now the overall total energy may be different, but the temperature is going to be the same. Okay, so if this lost 20 kilojoules, that must mean that this gained 20 kilojoules. And so I know that these values are equal. If I know that these values are equal, that must mean this must be equal. M lead, C uh, lead, delta T lead is equal to M H2O, C H2O, delta T H2O. Right? Because if Q is equal to this, I'm just plugging it in. That means these two must be equal to each other. And then don't forget for sign convention, this is a minus sign because this whole thing is losing energy. And I know all these values. And then don't forget that delta T is equal to T final minus T initial. So I'm going to expand this even further and say that M lead, C lead, T final 
minus T initial lead equals negative MH2O CH2O T final minus T initial of H2O. And guess what values we have? We have the mass of lead. We have the specific heat capacity of lead. We have the initial temperature of lead. We have the mass of water. We have the specific heat capacity of water. And we have the initial temperature of water. What is the only value we don't have that is equal on both sides? The final temperature. So now I'm going to walk us through and solve for this final temperature. I'm going to post that in another video. For the time being, maybe you could try and solve this on your own. In my next video, I'm going to answer this question.